well hello all and welcome I hope you're all doing well uh, I'm hoping you can hear me because it's raining now when I first came out here literally five minutes ago it was just very light drizzle nothing much and now it's suddenly picked up again um, what I'm doing today is I'm gonna get and start off me tomatoes now uh, I looked on my records and last year I did them I think it was the 26th of March today is the 20th I think I did them the 26th of March last year and they seem to be constantly playing catch up don't know whether it's me or the weather in general or what I don't know year before I did them I think it was the 13th of March and they seemed to race away and they were getting they were by the time I'd come to put them out they were starting to get onto the the leggy side we might say I know that's not too much of a problem with tomatoes because you can always bury them into the compost that little bit deeper uh, so what I've done is I've decided right today's the 20th basically in between the 13th and the 26th so let's go for it so what I'm doing is I'm doing two varieties I'm doing sweet million they're just a little like a, a grape size tomato um, done these now about three four years these and I've got to be honest I'm I'm very pleased with them they they when I come out here to harvest them there isn't many that go back into the house <laughs> put it that way and what else have I got and the other one I'm doing is Crimson Crush now I've done this for I don't know how many years now it's blight resistant I can I can get good good harvest good crop off these and also with the Crimson Crush that I've noticed is you get a variety you'll get some that are fairly small some that are quite big and I've noticed that over the years of me growing them and in previous years I've tried doing things like the big beefsteak tomatoes and yes we've we've had one or two off them but they've not been brilliant to put it bluntly um, and I've tried other smaller varieties I've tried other I've done things like Gardener's Delight Shirley and, and what have you and in the past I've been hit with blight and it's that's cocked everything up but with the Crimson Crush they seem to give me a good harvest they're blight resistant and they they uh, yeah I'm going to repeat myself they give me a good harvest I get a, I get a lot off them um, I'm starting them off in small seed trays these I can get quite easily spacing them out I can get 15 seeds into one of them they'll then go into two of those will fit into there quite easily with the propagator top on then these will go in the house uh, they won't I don't think I'm going to bother with any heat below them they could go on the mats but I don't think I'm going to bother with any heat below them because we've got heating on in the house and uh, and we'll see what happens from there so what I'm going to do is I've got all fingers and thumbs here I've got my compost mixed I'm going to fill fill these trays and then I'll bring you back when I'm ready to sow the seed and we're all finished and done so I'll see you in a minute or two uh, one other little thing um, that I need to to show you um, I did some begonias trailing begonias for the first time last year um, I asked for some advice because I'd never done them before 
and thank you those of you that came back and told me what I needed to do and again uh, I've got to thank Nigel Muddy Boots because at the end of the year I didn't know what to do with them then with regards saving them over winter and uh, so I took his advice and yesterday it struck my mind ah begonias I better have a look and see what they're like and see if they need going out <laughs> and uh, et voila so if you haven't if you've saved some and you haven't uh, had a look at them lately as you can see these definitely need doing what I'm going to do with those is I'm going to use I'm going to use normal seed tray like that compost they will go in so the tops are just level with the compost and then they'll go back in the house and uh, we'll keep an eye on them give them a bit of daylight now because they they look like they need it uh, I have got some more so I've got enough to do two hanging baskets this year so we'll be getting and doing of them so uh, I'll show you them when I'm finished as well so for now let's get back to the tomato seed right sweet million says there's 10 seeds in a pack so I want I've got three packs actually just as a belt and braces um, we'll see how many seeds we got here he says as he's throwing them everywhere one in there as I say I'm because I'm going to be laying out my tomatoes in these greenhouses here I've already worked out that I can do a total of nine of the Crimson Crush and I can get 25 let's just have a look in here and I can do 25 sorry nine of the sweet million and 25 of the Crimson Crush so there we go there's that's so I've got 12 that should do me actually I've got 12 seeds in one pack I think I'll leave it at that so that's 12 out of there now then what I'm going to do with them these are going to get watered once they go back in the house but we'll just make sure the seed is contacting compost nicely and then a bit of vermiculite over the top what I like about this stuff is it's obviously very light and gives a good covering and uh, gives little resistance to the plants as they start to grow right I've done them uh, I'll crack on and do the others and then I'll bring you back once I've got everything sown uh, I just thought I'll show you what I'm doing with regards to begonias because uh, there's a little bit of a little bit of a knack that I need to do with them so I'll bring you a bit closer and show you exactly how I'm uh, preparing these begonias right I've placed the I think they're called quorms I've placed them into I've, I've partly filled the seed tray with compost placed them in and now I'm very very carefully with just very small amounts of compost going round I've got some sieved compost I've used here from the seed sowing 
but I'm just making sure that nicely firmed in and then just very slowly going around with compost trying not to cover them uh, and try not to cover the corn corms and just put in enough compost in to go round them firm it down and we'll put a bit a little bit more and it's only the compost that I'm going to water I'm going to use um, a little sprayer and just spray round the round them so that I don't what you don't the last thing you want is water sitting in there or in these sitting in the middle because they're dished the last thing you want is water sitting in them because it'll just cause them to rot so I'll try and get some of the compost out of that carefully not disturbing too much I think that's going to do us I think that's going to be it so that's those done so I'll show you everything now <laughs> now that I've finished right all seeds sown and begonias all sorted so I'll spin you round and uh, show you what's uh, what's what with everything I've got everything all uh, sorted together tomatoes crimson crush sweet million and crimson crush in there 12 seeds in each tray these will go in the house I'll put the propagator tops on and they'll be watered once they go into the house the begonias again gone into the trays they've had compost put round them and they will be very gingerly watered all the way round so that I don't get any water on the actual qualms themselves so they're all nice and uh, nicely watered but not drowned not over watered that's the main thing I don't want to don't want to drown them not as yet they will then go into as I say these will all go into the house and uh, once them are all done we'll we'll see how the begonias get on but uh, yeah a bit of a bit of a strange thing there because it was a it was a, a last minute dot com sudden bang which it's not unusual for me to be honest I suddenly think of these things I'll, I'll be I'll be at work and I'll suddenly think oh I need to do so and so such a, all right you know need to get and do something uh, I have got some other sowing of seeds to do but uh, I'm not going to bother uh, boring you with that um, it's the time of year where everybody's sowing everything and it just all starts to get a bit samey which you know it goes it's par for the course isn't it really so uh, that's all them done and ready to go back in the house now well that's it for this one a little bit short and sweet talking of sweet I've just sown some sweet basil um, I've also done some French marigolds um, yes you'll notice there's no labels I've got them in the house uh, the French French marigold a little bit of a story uh, don't ask me what the variety is because all as I could tell you is yes basically because I saved seed from last year and I did different varieties from last year so yes I could look on my records to see what I'd done but I just put all the seed together in there not thinking just save the seed heads put them all together and they're all in there so all as I can say is they're French marigolds so I don't know I 
might just do myself a few more i'll put several seeds per station in these here just to but again they'll go in the house i might put them into propagators uh, heated propagators we'll see how we go especially with the basil i might might do that so as i say that's it for this one thank you all very much for watching it is very much appreciated uh, i have got some other stuff coming up I'm, we're starting to get now today is say 20th of march so i'm getting to a point now of starting my early potatoes but they'll have to come in here because i believe i'm not sure but if i start them within the next few days i believe we're at a chance of some frosts early part of next week so i don't know i've only been told that i've not seen it so i don't know so be good look after yourselves look after each other and i'll see you in the next one try out a bit